Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? My name is Juan Carlos from Inspire Growth. Today, in the segment of Growth Hacks Experiences, we have a special guest. We are thrilled to have Matt Harris joining us today to this episode. Let me tell you a little bit about Matt. Uh, Matt has an extraordinary journey in the cleaning industry and his expertise is also bringing him to apply SaaS and tech growth techniques and strategies into this new, this sector, the, the, the hospitality, the, the leisure, the cleaning industry, the cleaning industry worldwide. Now, Matt is also providing invaluable insights for their, his audience. Together with him, we're going to explore key challenges. We're going to discuss about uh, what is about, what can lead to a sustainable growth in this industry as well and then many other ones that are actually where it can be replicable. And we're going to also talk a bit about some strategies that are related to the common life of entrepreneurs. So welcome, Matt, how are you? Hey, Juan Carlos, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me onto your show. Looking forward to this. Excellent, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I would like to start by telling you, uh, asking you, Matt, could you tell us a little bit about how was it that you came into the sector where you are ex expanding your business? Sure. So I started a cleaning business uh, 11 years ago. Um, and at the time I was working, I had a full-time job. Um, I was a property lawyer uh, and I came up with the idea uh, to start a cleaning business just from uh, speaking with a couple of friends who had started businesses themselves. I thought, yeah, sounds like a great idea. And, um, and I started it as a side hustle initially. Then uh, a couple of years after launching the business, I decided that it was time for me to retire as a lawyer and focus on growing my business. And we did quite well. The first sort of three or four years, uh, we managed to double in size. Then um, I uh, managed to organize a couple of acquisitions. So we bought um, some cleaning businesses as well. And that really, that process didn't go as well as, uh, as, well as was planned. Um, there were sort of issues with uh, integration and we bought the wrong type of cleaning business uh, in hindsight um but you know it's all is all part of the learning curve and then uh really after making some operational changes so we had a team of you know 30 40 cleaners uh, at one stage and then we pivoted it and we outsourced everything to to other cleaning businesses um and um you know that enabled us to run quite a lean operation after doing all that I thought, look, I've been eight years in the game. It was time for me to to sell the business because I think I, I had probably taken it as far as I could at that time in my life. Um, and then after a sort of break for a couple of years where I had a property management business, which unfortunately didn't make it through COVID, um, I started hanging out in clean communities and there were two recurring themes I noticed. One was, um, you know, how do I find and retain good staff? And the other was, how do I, you know, get more work? How do I win more contracts? Um, uh, you know, find more cleaning opportunities. And I thought, well, you know, one thing that worked for me quite well when I started was um, sort of outbound marketing and, you know, cold calls, cold emails. Um, and I started helping a few cleaning business owners, you know, the stuff that I was telling them worked. And I thought, okay, there's, there's potential here to... Um, to you know grow this into a bit more of a business uh one thing led to another and then at, at the start of the year really is when we um at the growth lab we managed to get the most traction um we started working with a handful of cleaning businesses um originally for lead generation then that pivoted more into sort of becoming a growth partner so essentially helping them with um you know identify their growth strategies uh which sell cha sales channels to pursue organizing the sales processes, um, you know, identifying the ideal client profile, getting the right tech stack in place. Uh, and, you know, that is sort of, that's taken us up to the point where we are today. Wonderful. You know, I, that, that's in, 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 uh, exci exciting and, and exactly the, the, the perspective that I notice uh, when it comes about growth mindset and when it comes about understanding the, the let's say the growth strategies in terms of yeah. growth hacking, uh, there, there, there is no school for this. 
there is not really you cannot really go uh, to an university and say like okay teach me growth strategies uh, that they will tell yeah, you yeah. okay this is not, no the, like the process that you have been going through um it, it's necessary to really understand Absolutely. the different changes that are, that you go through a business that you go through a a different kinds of sectors and 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 and, and something that you mentioned is that uh, the moment that you you did acquisitions for your first business i think actually how most of the entrepreneurs don't even get to that level uh of ad, uh, doing acquisitions of our businesses in their first business especially uh yeah. probably that had to do also with your past as a in the, in the law yeah a little bit so i um i sort of three or four years into running my business i joined like um uh an entrepreneur community um and essentially there was a mentor there and you know we'd have sessions every a couple of months and a lot of it worked on mindset um and then there was also sort of different strategies that you can implement depending on whichever sector or industry you worked into and what got me sort of going down the acquisition route was I went on a, a retreat to um to Guilin in China uh, we were there for 10 days and you know during the day uh, a lot of the focus was on okay business you know what are the different options I think there were there were 50 of us on this retreat so that's 50 different businesses that's 50 different you know strategies and approaches that were applicable to each business um and you know I learned quite a bit um I'm really uh, and then the, the evening was sort of focused on, you know, mindset. Um, it was focused a lot around um, building the right habits, uh, you know, building the right sort of routines, um, you know, identifying when uh, you're doing things that are sort of self-sabotaging. Um, but it was really, I guess, being in that immersive experience that gave me the sort of confidence to think, well, like, why can't I? pursue this sort of strategy don't get me wrong I um I pursued it and I executed it wrong but therein lies the lesson right I still got a lot of experience from from that three or four year journey um after the acquisition and to be perfectly honest it is you know it, it's another approach that I'm looking at um right now so I'm currently in the process of uh sourcing you know identifying potential cleaning businesses to buy because the the long-term goal is to sort of build up a cleaning and fm group um I, I kind of know the sort of revenue target that we want to hit um and what the what the exit um, amount is going to be um but that that's going to take a period of you know three four five years to be able to get to that point uh and the good thing is that I, I've already done it once, not to any massive level you know we weren't dealing with uh, businesses of, of million pound sizes but I've gone through that buying experience already. And, and I think, you know, going back to growth, if you're looking to grow your business um, at quite a rapid pace, then acquisition is, is going to be one of the quickest, if not the quickest way to do that. Because, uh, you know, especially if you've already got a, a solid operation, then you can buy revenue, strip out the costs and integrate it within your existing business. Um, so that that's something that, you know, we will be looking to introduce um, at the growth lab with the cleaning businesses that we're working with simply because there's a lot of opportunity out, out there right now, not just because of the eco economic climate, but, um, uh, you know, demographically, there's a lot of baby boomers now. So people that were born in the 50s, 60s that have businesses that don't necessarily have succession plans, you know, what do they do? They want to retire, but they don't just want to wind down the business. Um, you know, an acquisition with the right sort of uh, structure, uh, structured um, payout is is going to be ideal for them. So, you know, there's a couple of past experience, learning since that experience and, and all the other things that I picked up along the way has sort of brought me to this point. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited because there's there's a lot of opportunity ahead and and, um, you know, I'm I'm always open to learning and and applying and and seeing what works. Wow, that that sounds very exciting, Matt. Uh, I, I I I I see a big vision. Uh, that's what that's what I consider actually is always in, pretty important for for all entrepreneurs 
we yeah. always have a north start uh and not to be too too limited about it to really understand actually the the the, the potential that someone can have uh, in yeah. that sense I, I also wanted to i would like to share to to our audience that uh, it doesn't happen to me that many times that i see a company or the, let's say the channels of a company and that in the first three seconds i understand exactly where uh, the sector they are, what they are doing, uh, yeah. and on one of this, one of, on some of the ways how they are achieving it. Uh, this happened with me with Matt uh, when I visit mm, your website. You. And actually, that that ex right away was very clear. Yeah. So, could you tell us a little more about how that came to happen? Yeah, sure. Look, uh, again, this this has come about through experience. So. When I had my cleaning business, I wasn't taking this approach. You know, as with any small business owner, when you started or as you grow your business, you kind of keep your head in the game a lot. So you focus on what's in front of you rather than taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture. Um, so it was really after I sold my cleaning business, after um, my property management business didn't work out, I kind of, um, I spent a lot, a lot of time learning um learning about myself you know my strengths and weaknesses and also uh sort of going back to basics in terms of all right how how can i you know the next venture that i go uh, go into how how can i make it better um what would make it easier um and really a lot of it comes down to you know as you start a new business you need to find your niche you need to determine the market that you're serving you need to identify the type of clients that you want to target. And that process for me with the Growth Lab, it took, uh, it probably took a good six or seven months of, okay, I know I want it to be in cleaning because that's where I have the majority of my experience. So for me, that was already, you know, a done deal. I know my market. So now I needed to, to sort of hone in and, and find what sector in that market I was looking to serve. Um, and that was a bit of trial and error. Um, originally, you know, I was going after um, sort of small businesses under 500,000 turnover because I thought, okay, I could offer them some coaching in that respect. Um, that didn't quite work. It wasn't quite the right fit for me. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to go for the bigger businesses, the sort of, you know, one to actually no, 10 to 20 million. Um, and again, I haven't had any experience working in that size of business. Uh, but I tried because I wanted to see what the barriers to entry were in dealing with that type of business. And I found that where I am right now, it was a little bit above my experience. So then I took it back to, okay, you know, between uh, maybe one to five or one to 10 million turnover, that may well be the, the sort of sweet spot because at that size of business, you know, they will have, uh, the owner will have uh, some sort of management team in place, but they won't necessarily have all of the right infrastructure to enable them to grow beyond, you know, one, two, three million pound turnover. And they've got a nice business, they've got nice clients, and, you know, they're probably happy with uh, the existing business, but to kind of start scaling beyond that, and um, they need to, they need to um, change their approach a little bit and put a little bit more sales infrastructure in place. Um, so really, once I, I spent time researching, you know, I must have spoken with, I don't know, 100 plus cleaning business owners of all different sizes. Um, you know, that was reaching out to them on LinkedIn, that was, uh, you know, doing email campaigns, I was going through Twitter. Um, and really, uh, that helped me determine the, the market, the ideal client and the niche that I wanted to go after. So now, we look to work with cleaning businesses between one and five million pounds turnover that, um, uh, you know, have a good operational setup, have second tier management, but don't necessarily have a dedicated sales uh, or business development function uh, because they rely a lot on uh, referral marketing or uh, networking and relationships. They don't have any systemized way to, um, you know, to bring in new clients. Perhaps they do a bit of Google AdWords um, but they're not really getting the right type of clients as a result of implementing Google AdWords because 
you can't really say, okay, I want a manufacturing business with 50 million pound turnover to, you know, land on my ad. You, you don't have control over that. Um, so that helped me define the, the sort of the market in the niche. And then really in terms of, uh, in terms of the approach that, um, I took to sort of find these clients, you know, I, again, I, I went back to basics. I'm not a sales guy. Sales isn't, isn't my forte, but as you well know, you know, as an entrepreneur, you, you, you're selling all the time, right? You might not be the expert in sales, but to get your business started, you need to sell without any sales. Like you've got no business. Um, so, you know, I, I started learning some fundamentals um, and, you know, lead generation fundamentals, sales process, sales met methodologies, you know, different um, technologies to use. And the more I spoke with cleaning business owners, the more I realized that they, they don't have any of that. You know, a lot of the owners that I spoke with, um, whether they were uh, a sub 500,000 pounds turnover business or a 10 million pound business, they didn't even have a CRM. And I was thinking, have you got to 10 million without a CRM? How, how are you not following up on leads on clients? Like how, how are you managing that process? Wow. Um, and that, that was an eye opener. So that helped me evolve the business from, okay, let me try and generate some leads for you to, I need to take a complete step back and, and even going back to the fundamentals of like, what, have you got a sales process? Have you got anywhere to capture this information? You know, do you have a, a nurture campaign? Do like what what does your process look like? And oftentimes when I ask uh business owners that they just, you know, the phone goes quiet or they stare at me blankly at the screen because they, they don't have anything. They're like, Well, I don't have anything. Yeah. I'm just thinking if you know, if you want to be serious about growing your business, then there are some sort of key fundamentals that you need to have in place. Yeah, exactly. I think that the, that's the interesting about the the sense that sometimes when we see these companies, they they have been operating still on 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 the old times, like almost like yellow pages to, to mm. find their their clients. And, 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 and look, and, obviously they they found something that works. Something yeah. works. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got to that size. So that you know that isn't to be. Um, that's not to be critical uh however to to continue that growth like you, you need to have an infrastructure in place you no know? you need to have a process you, you need to be doing something repetitively yeah indeed and there there is something that is happening right now like for example how do you see it from the perspective as a uh, as, as an specialist in growth um ai it's appearing now in the in 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 the industry, uh, and you know um, uh, the, the 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 cleaning industry. The I I I started my career in the leisure industry, in the tourism industry. Uh, so we we were we we were in similar uh, industries that let's say they they deal with so much people, yeah. So so much uh, so much uh, let's say. Uh, People, uh, training processes, so so many yeah. HR situations, uh, and now, uh, how is do you think actually that's going to change with all this new technology coming? I'll be honest, <laughs> the cleaning industry, in my experience, has been like super slow at adopting any sort of technological changes. Yes, there are cleaning robots, and there is. You know, there is um, like cleaning hardware. Uh, but from a software perspective, like the cleaning industry, in particular in the UK, I wouldn't go as far as the US. I think they're, they're much more savvy over there to, uh, at using tech and, and adopting tech. But here in the UK, I'd be surprised if, if 1% of the, the cleaning businesses over here, you know, have a uh a solid software infrastructure um and of that one percent how many of them would be using ai i I, I would guess zero so really um you know can it have an impact in the industry for sure it can um you know from a, an office space you know it can help with 
looking at looking at what we do it can help uh, you know be your research assistant for for doing research for you know um doing background uh, research on the type of clients that you're looking to target for building your uh, your prospecting list for helping you prepare the first draft of your cold email um for you know helping you prepare your sales letter um expanding it out a little bit you mentioned hr yes for sure i'm sure there's you know employee handbooks and processes that can be implemented in that space from an operational perspective can it contribute to you sorting out a procedures manual you know and training guides for sure it can contribute to all of that the the reality is how many cleaning business owners and i go back to the demographic that i pointed out you know from uh, the acquisition criteria like how many of the business owners who are 50 60 70 now are going to adopt technology i'd be surprised if well they'll certainly have an email i'd be surprised if they have a crm and that's not i don't i don't want to um come off as um uh again being critical about it but it, you that's that is a, a common occurrence that i come across they just they just don't have it they work off a spreadsheet or a notebook <laughs> i mean what can you do with that yeah yeah it's a, it, it, it has been a relationship strategy uh, industry for sure for, for a long term a lot for of sure. it is 